Good morning. Thank you, Sharon. That was beautiful. I'll go ahead with the call to worship. It'll be Matthew 22, verse 34 to 39. Master, which is the greatest law? Jesus said unto them, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and the greatest commandment, and the second is like unto it. Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the laws and all the prophets. Loving God, who gives fire to, who gives oxygen to fire, who gives fig trees fruit, who gives expectant people hope, grant us that amazing peace that passes all understanding. Doctrine and Covenants 163:10a teaches us, God does not want to stand far off, but yearns to draw close so that wounds may be healed, emptiness filled, and hope strengthened. 
As we celebrate joy this third Sunday of Advent, we pray in this service you open our hearts to truly feel your presence. Give us ears to hear your word and direct our paths to walk in Jesus' footsteps and to live each day loving our neighbors as ourselves. We pray this in Jesus' holy name. Amen. We are so happy today to be able to share together in the service of confirmation with Jim. Confirmation is the ordinance of the church that promises the gift of the Holy Spirit to be with you as you journey through life. Earlier today, we shared together in the baptismal experience in which Jim demonstrated his commitment to live his life with Christ. By making your decision to enter the water of, of baptism into the church membership, you each are demonstrating your commitment to follow Christ. Baptism is an external action, but it's based on an internal decision that you've made. With confirmation, the Holy Spirit is invited to become a part of your life, to strengthen, to comfort, to enlighten, and to guide you in fulfilling the commitment that you've made. God is promising you to be your constant companion, and you have promised to him to travel with him on that road. We as members of the Mission Road congregations are promised to walk with you also, Jim. Your loving family supports you as this travels, and we all join together in that support. Today, I would like all of us to think of the image of a very familiar footprints in the sand. Visualize yourself walking down the beach. You and a friend walking side by side. And as you go through the sand, there are a pair of footprints side by side walking along. 
But in this image, suddenly we see the pair of footprints stopping, but going forward through the sand is only a single set of footprints. That's symbolic of you being carried along and supported by your heavenly father. This spirit of Christ is a promise to always be right beside you. As you move through life and as you carry on with the endeavors and everything that you do in your regular life, know that God is there with you. May we each offer our prayers of support for Jim and participate with him in this prayer of confirmation. We all have that promise of Christ walking with us to give us comfort, to give us strength, and to give us the support that we need as we live our life's commitment. Jim will be confirmed by Elder Excuse me, Elder Karen Berkby, assisted by our pastor, Larry Berkby. Our dear Heavenly Father, we are so thankful for this day and the events that have happened so far. Father, we pray your blessing upon this confirmation prayer that we might Say those words that would be pleasing unto thee and that would be meaningful to Jim. As he has emerged from the waters of baptism today, Father, we are so excited for him and for what life holds before him. We know, Father, that this sacrament is a sacrament which confers membership in the church for Jim. It's amazing that today he entered the doors before 9 o'clock as a friend of the congregation. And today when he leaves, he'll be a member. He'll be one of us with all the rights, the responsibilities, and the privileges of membership. Father, we pray that he will feel this inclusion and that we will recognize and benefit from his ministry and he from ours. And the second part of this prayer of confirmation of this sacrament, Father, we pray that you would be accepting of Larry and I as ministers in the Melchizedek priesthood, and that, Father, we serve as vessels through which only you can bestow the gift of the Holy Spirit on Jim. Father, we know and we pray that you would help Jim to know and to understand the workings of the Spirit, how it is a companion, how it is a help, how it is a joy, always present, only if called upon. And many times, Father, we are so thankful that your spirit is with us and will be with Jim even when it's not recognized. Father, we all know that we have ups and downs and are so thankful for the spirit to help with those with to help us with that. Father, we uh, thank you for your presence as we go through those ups and downs, that um, we can have your strength and we can have the hope that we might need. And also, Father, in our good times, we are so thankful for the Spirit that helps to magnify the joys of life. And that we pray this for Jim as well. And as time passes and Jim has more chances to 
learn and to experience your spirit. We pray that your spirit would truly be a blessing to him as his life goes forward. And so this day, we pray all these things most humbly that your great love would be bestowed upon him and that the helper of the Spirit will be with him always. We pray, Father, that you would abundantly bless Jim and Mary as they go about life's journey and that their life would be a blessing unto us and to you. So it was with joy and anticipation that we ask these blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. go with the prayer piece. Um, God is the sun and the stars, the ground and the, and the trees, the air and the clouds, and the water and the Holy Spirit. He is the earth. What I like about this is that it tells you that even though that you don't see him he is still there with you i'm gonna read this prayer by tiffany and kayla bryan dear god sometimes i forget that you created both tears of sadness and joy we see so many situations for which we understand families in need of food lonely people in search of friendship and animals that need homes, and earth that needs rest. You are with us. We see your hand at work in creating peace in our communities. May we join you in creating peace. May we pray for the lonely, the hungry, and homeless, and tired. And now, please strengthen us to hug, to feed, and provide and care for all in need. Fill us with joy and as we strive to share peace. May joy overflow and bless those we serve. In the name of your Son, Jesus, the one we wait for and who gives us great joy. Amen. Today, we relight the first two candles of the Advent wreath, the candle of hope and the candle of love. And today is the third candle of Advent. It is the candle of joy. As the coming of Jesus, our Savior, draws nearer, our joy builds with our anticipation of his birth. From the book of Isaiah, we read the words of our Lord. But be glad and rejoice forever in what I am creating, for I am about to create Jerusalem as a joy and its people as a delight. And from the New Testament, 
the words of Paul to the people of the church in uh, Galatia. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. Let us pray. We joyfully praise you, O Lord, for the fulfillment of your promise of a Savior and what that means in our lives. Thank you for the gift of salvation through the Spirit and the birth of your Son, Jesus, creating us anew as we wait and help us to see your glory as you fill our lives with your living spirit. Help us to remember to seek the joy of your love and to always rejoice in your presence of our lives. Amen. Good morning. How was your week? Remember when we talked about Jesus' love last week and that I am supposed to love that guy who really gets on my nerves. Yeah. yeah. Well, I tried to treat him as Jesus would have, and I found out the guy isn't nearly as bad as I thought but not sure I can say I love you yet, but... Oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. Don't worry. It gets easier the more that you try to do it. I surveyed my friends and asked if they knew about agape love. Not many of them did, so I tried to explain it to them. Wow, that's terrific. Did it give you any joy to do that? Joy? Uh, I don't know I would say that, but it did feel good. Well, I ask about joy because that's what this Advent Sunday is all about. You mean happiness? Laughing? That sort of thing? Well, no, not exactly. You know, it's a different kind of joy. More like well-being than delight. Yeah, yeah. But it's about, Jesus talks about joy. The best thing is that both of you have already started down the road of Jesus' kind of joy. Huh? Oh, this joy does, it goes together with love that we talked about last week. Let us read from the Bible in the Gospel of John again. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept the Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be complete. I think I get it. God's love for Jesus is the same as Jesus has for us. Is that right? Yep, yep, keep on going. And if we love as Jesus taught, we will have joy? Yes. By keeping the great commandment, we will have joy. 
Is that the one that says we are to love the Lord our God with all of our heart, soul, and mind, and to also love our neighbor as ourself? I don't even know my neighbors. Well, it's a good time to meet them and show them some love. Really? Yes, and neighbor refers to everyone on the planet. When you really love and care for all people equal to yourself, then you'll experience joy. joy. Exactly. You do get it. So that's what I felt when I delivered the food to those families and was kind to the guy that used to bug me. And when I told my friends about God's love? Yes, that's it. This Advent stuff is really educational. And fun. And just wait till next week. It's the favorite one of all. What, what is, is it? it? Uh oh, you'll just have to wait and see. Okay. Okay, well, let's be good this week. You bet. I will. I want to have more of that joy. As I looked through the worship helps and ran across that reading, it spoke to me, and I'm hoping that us sharing it with you had some parts that would speak to you also. It really says what today is all about. And today we do celebrate the third Sunday of our Advent season. That means the time is getting really near. We are hopeful. We are loving. We are joyful. We are joyful about what's going to come next. Today, we have experienced all of these attributes as we shared with Jim in baptism and confirmation. We look forward to additional events similar to these as we express ourselves and we find those expressions in the coming weeks of our life together. Today's scripture lesson comes from the book of Zephaniah. Zephaniah has to be one of the shortest books of the Bible. In the Old Testament, towards the end, there's only three chapters. It's about five pages. It's a whole book. It's one of the minor prophets, etc. But I was impressed with some things that were in there. And the part that we were focusing on today is in chapter 3, the last, last chapter of it, beginning with verse 14. Sing aloud, O daughter of giant, shout, O Israel, rejoice and exult with all your heart, O daughter of Jerusalem. The Lord your God is in your midst. He will rejoice over you with gladness. He will renew you in his love. He will exalt over you with loud singing. And he will save the lame and gather the outcast. He will change their shame into praise and renown in all of the earth. As one of my daily habits, I, I like to read the daily bread uh, that comes, I get on my phone or on, on email every, every day. And today's uh, uh, message was given by Apostle Robin Linkart, and she, kind of, she addressed the first two lines of this, of this scripture with the words, really just three words to think about, and they were all in there. Sing, shout, and rejoice. We sing, we trust in the voice that's within you. We shout, the Lord hears what's in our hearts. We rejoice, knowing that you are loved, that you are forgiven, and you are an acceptable servant of Christ. Advent continues, and so does our preparation for this season. In today's scripture, the author moves from a statement of calling the people to repentance and obedience 
into a reassuring promise that everything's going to turn out okay. The Lord, the, the, the verse that spoke to me the most was the verse, the Lord your God is in your midst. It affirms the promise that we have experienced here today. The author of Zephaniah portrays the character of God as loving, as exalting, and as protecting of God's children. God wants people to know his counsel and to follow and to strive to do his will. Last week, Jennifer reminded us of those two commandments and we've talked about them here today. The first, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength. And the second, just like it, to love your neighbor as yourself. We here at Mission Road have shared through the years with gifts that are distributed to people that we don't know personally. As I came in this morning and I saw the bags and the boxes, I was again touched by the outpouring of generosity that we feel. There's an expression of warmth. There's an expression of gratitude that I feel inside as I see your expression of love and concern as you've demonstrated by bringing those gifts and sharing those gifts. It brings a feeling of joy as I think of sharing gifts with others and hopefully smiles on their faces. I'm also thinking today of Big John. In all of our family times together, one expression that he always shared was, we are all so richly blessed. Truly we are. We experience joy as we are able to share with others from our blessings. The Central Avenue Center of Hope is providing a much needed ministry in their community. I'm so happy that we can be a part of that in some way. Lastly, I would like to have you visualize something with me again. I'd like you to visualize a day that's very cold. Right now, we don't have that outside. Typically, this time of the year, it would be 30 degrees. But imagine a day that's very cold. I think back to my farming days of growing up, and days that it was pretty cold when you got there. So visualize that day that you're in. It's chilling. You're outside. You're doing jobs that have to be done. You're getting the whatever has to be done completed. Are you there? You work and work and finally you are finished and you can't hardly wait to get back inside. When you get back inside, you remove your coat, your hat, your gloves. You move on into the living room by the fireplace to find your favorite chair. You sit down in that chair next to the fireplace and find a cup of hot chocolate right there on the table beside you. You take a sip and as you do, you feel the warmth permeate your inside. This is what I hope you've experienced today. As we have shared together in this third Sunday of Advent, this Sunday of joy, please go forth with joy and continue, continue to prepare in this final week of the Advent season. Be hopeful, be loving. Demonstrate this countenance of joy. And as we said earlier, be ready for next week. Also, for my visual imagery, I was outside playing with the kids, building a snowman and a snow fort, and then we went inside to get hot chocolate, and that was a good experience. 
And that's a wonderful joy experience when you watch your children play like that, oblivious to how cold it is. <laughs> OK. As we prepare to give our offerings to the Lord, let us recognize our gratefulness to the Lord, who served as a light to our darkness. We show that feeling of gratitude by our offerings, some of which, which will help this congregation, and the rest will be used to bring the light of Jesus Christ to those who have yet to learn of him. So please pray with me. Dear Lord, we impart to you today our abundant gifts. Guide us in our choices as we strive to follow and share with those of less abundance. May our gifts be of comfort to the poor and the needy, the sick and the afflicted, we pray, Lord, we will have the gift to see the wisdom to answer the need, to answer the needs of your people. Amen. Was awesome. <laughs> thank you so much for that, Sharon. And I want to thank all of you who participated in this service. I am so blessed to have you in my life. Please play with me. Pray. You can play with me too. <laughs> Gracious Creator, we are embraced by your love each day. This love is rich and deep, and it holds us up when we 
when we feel weak. It is your strength that blesses us today. Your strength is also with us, always. And with this reminder, you renew us. With this reminder of joy, it is alighted on our faces, a smile of joy, with peace and love deep in our hearts. Our cups runneth over. This overflowing cup we pass to our sisters and our brothers. Thank you, Lord, for your grace. Amen. <laughs>